The best thing is just start talking. What's going on, Robert? Robert would fund the first is here. How's it going, brother? Excellent, Jason. Pleasure to meet you. And thank you for having me on the show. It's great having you on, man. You guys are really at the forefront of what's going on right now in supporting the protector community. And it's not just protect our community. So fund the first is kind of like a GoFundMe, but for our community, from firefighters to law enforcement, to police, to even corrections officers, emergency responders, nonprofits and business. So basically the protector community. So I love it, man. I love what you're doing. Thank you so much. You know, that's the first thing that everyone comes to every that comes to everyone's mind. When you think of a crowdfunding kind of campaign or a fundraiser, everyone's like, go fund me. There's gotta be a mm-hmm. GoFundMe for that. What's going on? But we wanted to fight that. We wanted to make sure that we would become a household name, especially for our community, like you said, which is first responders, military, medical professionals, their families, friends, nonprofits, businesses alike. And we wanted to provide them with a trusted source, not just a a platform where they could do this, but somewhere where they could really trust and rely on so that also donors know that money is going to a true and honest source. So we do that thanks to our partnership with ID.me. Everything's verified. All the campaigns are verified. Our team, they don't go live right away. Like a lot of these platforms, as soon as you click enter, it's up there. It's ready. With us, there's a grace period. Our team has to fully vet it. If we feel that anything is a little off, because you know what? There are bad eggs out there. There are people still, even though they're first responders, retired, active, there's still some some scumbags out there. Unfortunately, there really are. So we have to vet the story as well. And if we feel that something's a little off, we call the department, we call the union, we call their next of kin, and we vet everything to make sure that it is true and honest before we activate it or we decline it. Well, I'm glad you said that. There are scumbags, but especially when you put money in, involved. Um, but I like that you're actually, you vet quick. If there isn't a, an issue or something happens quick, you vet, you make it happen. Unfortunately, there was a loss of life last night. Uh, an officer lost her uh, life in a line of duty. And it's just horrible, man. And you guys jumped right on it. I looked at the, uh, the fund, the first page, and it's like, boom, it's right up there. So you are vetting and making sure that it's valid sources right away you're not just hey you know what this is a great idea let's just hang right no so we we do a lot of organic outreach ourselves so because we are first responders we understand how to talk to one of another one another you know it's not just about business because i have the business background our team has the business background but being able to walk the talk walk the walk is something really special and unique that our community very much understands so last night, my wife actually called me and she goes, I'm not going to be home in time. I don't know if you're going to be able to go to work or what's going on. She's stuck in traffic. And I go, well, what happened? She goes, an officer just got killed. And I go, oh my God, he was doing a routine car stop. And this woman, I'm sure you saw in the news, mm-hmm. bad mouthing police, disgusting. And she ends up killing the guy, you know, absolute tragedy. It's horrible. He's got two children, his wife, you know, they just thought he was going out to work and now he's not coming home. And it's absolutely horrible. So what we do from our standpoint is we reach out right away. So whoever works in that, it happened to be Highway 3 and the NYPD, we reached out to members of the Highway 3 unit and we let them know that we're here to support them. We don't say, hey, use our platform because that comes out obviously wrong and that's not the type of people we are. We just let them know that we're here, we support them. If there's anything they need, they can by all means use our platform. And if they don't wanna use our, our platform, we're gonna help them regardless. We want to be there as a talking point, as an outlet, because everyone's going through an emotional, emotional distress in that moment. So right away, they actually said, well, we were actually considering using Fund the First anyway, because there's been plenty of other NYPD ones that have been on our platform. So they were able to get us the credentials for um, Officer Sacco's wife, and we verified the wife. And that's why the beneficiary of the campaign says uh, Irene Sacco's. And then the organizer was one of the union delegates from Highway 3 of the NYPD. So that campaign now, it's been live for a day and it's already at just about $40,000. You know, there's been almost 400 donors to it and it's really incredible. And you know what? We don't look at the dollar amount that comes in. We look at the support system that comes mm-hmm. with it because that's what families need. And you know this, serving in the military. And again, thank you for your service. But you know this all too well. When you go through a tragedy like that, you don't care about money. You don't care about anything that's coming in, but you need that support, that love. You need something that's going to lift your spirits. Because that tragedy is so hard what you're going through, you need to be able to say, okay, 
I know people care about me. And that's what we provide with our platform. And you know, the other thing too is I didn't check, but this fund to first have like the message boards, like GoFundMe, like you donated and, mm -hmm. and et cetera. That's another thing too about, uh, I like the idea and I like the concept. I'm, I'm sold on fund the first because GoFundMe, you can get lost. You don't have a vetting. And then you can get those comments in there that the family might come across and be like, oh my gosh, uh, people targeting LEOs, targeting this, targeting that, and have no means to, to change the comments. Um, it's a great avenue. And having $40,000 right off the bat after one day is people have no idea, unless they've actually been in a situation, the emotional distress of losing, losing a loved one and then having going, oh, wow, uh, there's a lot more than just paying for a funeral when oh, yeah. it comes to death. Yeah, we see it. I mean, you know, we post things on social media and then you see comments come in and a comment will say, well, the department is covering their family for the rest of the life. No, they're not. No, no, they're not. You know, there's only so much that the department is going to cover that emotional distress. They're not covering the loss of, of, you know, a loved one. They're not covering, you know, the loss of funds over time. They're not covering. They're only covering so much. And people don't realize that, you know, because nowadays everyone thinks that they're what? a pro or a, or a uh, you know a doctorate in every single aspect of life mm -hmm. and until you live it like you said you know you don't really know what's going on and it's you know what it's extremely humbling to be able to give back to people in this type of manner where it's fully trusted it's it's fully verified yeah and i'd, I'd like know. to i'd like to also say in the fed the fed aspect too is you don't get pension you don't get all of that stuff you do not you if you elect to get uh, extra benefits when it comes to death, you have to pay for them. Uh, you will get like a paycheck plus, I think you might get a year salary, but that's it. Mm -hmm. After that, you're on your own. And you imagine you're a spouse, a loved one, anything that's being supported by that, uh, officer, agent, uh, emergency responder, anything you got to move on and you got to figure out how to move on and having somewhere where you could, Hey, you know what? I need help. I need help. And it's, it's a financial help. And there's a lot of people out there looking to provide help. They just don't know where to go. Right. And having something like this is, is a perfect opportunity. Right. It's a, it's a great source. And you know what? The reason we developed this, I mean, it's a long story and a lot of things come out of a hardship. And unfortunately, a great thing came out of a hardship. But the reason we developed this was because not only because of that hardship, but because of what we see actively on these other platforms. And we see when an incident like this with Officer Tacos, when it happens, you see one campaign created, two, three, four, all of a sudden there's six. And then all of a sudden the media picks up three of them and they're dispersing them all over the place and people are donating to different ones and they're donating blindly. They don't know if that money is actually going to that verified source because it's not verified. Who is the source that the money's going to, mm -hmm. you know? And that's why we created this because your money is going to that beneficiary only. That's it, you know? And that's what we want to combat. And listen, these other platforms, GoFundMe is great. There's different outlets with GoFundMe that they use, which is great. Kickstarter is great. Indiegogo is great. Fundly, they're all great platforms. But what's unique about ours, it caters to our nation's heroes. And they need that more than ever, especially now. It's, believe me, I understand that completely. And a lot of those, especially the protector community, and, and I always say the protector community has gone beyond just, you know, those first responders, military, and I can go down a laundry list. It's now the people mm -hmm. that support them. Um, I noticed that you do have also, it's not just for death, okay? Fund the first is not just for death. I, I saw on there that you have your, someone has cancer, you're helping them out. And also, I, I believe it was a fire department that needed help rebuilding. Because a lot of these small, especially volunteer fire departments, and especially out in the middle of nowhere, and especially just anything, they don't have the money for even normal gear. So they do need help. So I kind of walk us through about like what else you provide rather than just the death benefits. Yeah, I'm happy you brought that up, actually. So there's so many different reasons why people could fundraise. And a lot of people thought that we developed Fund the First out of the defund the police movement. And it had nothing to do with it. It was a coincidence that it went live basically around the same time, which was last year in July. And since July, since our launch, which is only nine months ago, we've been in the media over a hundred times and big time media, you know, Fox News, CBS, NBC, all over the place. We have over 175 fundraising campaigns. We have over 11,000 unique donors. 
we have over 4,000 registered users. And with those 175 campaigns, it's, we've had now over $1.1 million donated. It's incredible. It's incredible. And those are for all different causes. There's illnesses, surgeries, deaths, catastrophic losses. I mean, you know, hurricanes, floods, whatever it may be, you can raise money for that. We have a department down in Louisiana that's still trying to raise funds from a, from a, uh, a hurricane in the fall. They had 10 of their officers. Their homes were wiped out. So they're doing a fundraiser. There's a fire department. There's multiple fire departments on our platform, actually. One out in, um, oh, man, I forget the state, but out west. And their fire department got burned down by a fire coincidentally, got burned down and they're looking to raise funds. And then another fire department, they don't have the funds. And what's strange about this fire department, the mayor is actually the chief of the fire department as well. Super small town. And they cover like 40 square miles. So it's, it's large and they have no funding. They have two fire trucks that are beat up from like the fifties and sixties. So they're trying to raise money. And unfortunately it hasn't really kicked off because crowdfunding has to have an emotional connection. When you share it, you have to share it with your networks that know you and have to have some type of emotional connection or emotional connection to the story. So that's why it's really important when you share this to not just share the link. You share your campaign, you say, please donate because, or please help because, please share also because. And there's another incident where people can raise money. There's two other things which are pretty cool. There's fundraisers where people could do for uh, good causes such as children's hospital toy drives things like that. And then there's business ventures. We have multiple businesses that are first responder, military, medical professional startups that although they can't sell equity on our, on our platform, they could do donation-based oh, tier yeah. incentives, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. So we have a, a great campaign. Actually, he's going to be on my podcast tomorrow. Frank, he's doing, it's called Crayons Ready to Eat. And he's out in Cali. And he's got the military. I see you smiling because you know about this stuff already. <laughs> <laughs> so you know about it already. So... <laughs> I think it's like an inside joke with the, what is it, the Marines or something? The Marines, yeah. 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 So he did it. I mean, good for him. Good for him, whatever. So he did it and he, successful campaign is up to like $12,000 right now. So he's getting into the manufacturing stage, but he's giving back tier based incentives. So if you donated a hundred bucks, yeah. you get X amount of crayons, you know, 200, whatever it is. So it's good. It, there's all different types of things that you could raise money for on the platform. And the only thing right now that Hopefully we could do down the line, which is a lot of regulations with SEC and Edgar and all that kind of stuff, if you're familiar, but which is selling equity. We'd love to be able to do that like these other platforms like Republic, which we're actually listed on, but I'll get to that if you want to talk to it. But um, yeah, I mean, it, listen, it's, it's great to be able to provide this platform and give people so many different reasons to fundraise because you never know when you need a fundraiser. And you know what? When you do, if you're in our community, I'm the funder first. I, uh, I didn't know you did the business type ones and stuff like that. Yeah. Because I have a, um, in personal note, over the weekend, I have a, a friend who's EOD, uh, retired EOD, multiple tours, uh, five tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. And we're talking like full tours here. Like that's five years of his life overseas. Wow. And he started a racing team. Uh, he's funding almost all of it himself, himself except for uh, some donations as far as equipment and gear and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But he's putting EOD uh, guys and veterans behind the wheel. And I'm like, huh. This might be a good way to raise money for cars or, you know, have incentive type stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so that's just a great idea. I never thought about it. I just thought about it. I thought it was just fundraising for, you know, the, the basic needs. But this is this is an incredible platform, brother. Yeah, thank you. I mean, listen, guide them our way. You know, let them know about Fund the First. And you know what? Here's, this, here's something that a lot of people, they don't want to start a campaign because they're like, oh, what happens if it doesn't succeed? Who cares? Yeah, what happens if it doesn't? Who cares? Who cares? Yeah, you're right. Who cares? Give it a try. It, it, it's no, um, you know, you're, you're no risk. No risk. One thing, you know, you brought it up before about having to sell your campaign. And it is so hard, 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 hard for the protector community to try to sell themselves. Oh, yeah. They'll sell anybody else all day long. But when it comes to asking for help themselves, it's like impossible. Mm -hmm. So I ask everybody out there, just look in the camera, take a deep breath. And remember, this is about the bigger picture. If you need a hand, you're getting help up. We're not, it's not getting pushed down. You know, you just, sometimes you need a hand and sell it. You have to sell to your community. Uh, and you don't have to be dirty like a used car salesman. You can just sell. <laughs> now, when you give that, that unique reason why, whatever it may be, people automatically, they get drawn in, you know? And a lot of us, we know this. I was never, uh, well, I, I take that back. 
my wife says it all the time. You're always the center of attention. What are you talking about? <laughs> but yeah, but I was never a great speaker. It took me a long time through my business career to become a better speaker. So that was something I was always afraid of doing in front of large public audiences because I was afraid of slipping up. So a lot of people that aren't familiar with it and aren't used to it, that could be a fear that they have. But then you know what? You have social media. Type. Just type something. Type yeah. something special. You know, type something that people could relate to. And then people will donate. Yeah, and then that's the thing. It's just something they relate to. Believe me, if you look at any of my social media from three years ago, I was nowhere near the media, nowhere near nothing. And it takes a little time to get used and be comfortable in front of this camera and a mic. But use it as a start off point. Use it to get your help, get your step up, and then use it to help someone else. You don't have to stop it after you get your help and you're ready to go. Business, cancer, death, anything. You have that opportunity to later on to say, hey, you know what? They were there for me. Um, now I'm going to be there for somewhere else. And it's right. a healing process as well. Mm -hmm. no, it's, it's so important. And you know what? Our community is so tight knit. You know, the military is so bound together. Police is so bound together. Firefighters, we're all, we all have our own tight niche groups, right? But then also as a whole, we're all together. Mm -hmm. Our families are all together. Everyone that supports us, the communities that surround us, you know, as much as we, you know, see so much negativity in the media right now, we're still supported by everyone around us, still supported, you know, and that's what people tend to forget sometimes. Yeah. If you get away from social media and you get away from the highways and the big cities and stuff, you'll see that there's a lot, a lot of real America going on out there. A lot of real support, a lot of real patriotism. And yeah. it, you don't have to be blindly patriotic. We're not saying that. We're just saying, hey, there's a lot of support for people that are putting their lives on the line. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, we're just really, really happy to be able to provide this. And you know what? There's also an opportunity right now. We took it a different route. Um, like any business, any business has to raise capital, right? How are you going to get started off, off your feet? You know, what do you do? You know, after forming your corporation, after putting together your team, now when you're building your product, which is our service, our platform, which is a lot of technology behind it, how do we have the proper capital to now to build it and go beyond? So we raised money through investors when we started, but now there's an opportunity to have everyone in our community join our family. And we have a crowdfunding campaign of our own on Republic. Republic is an equity crowdfunding website, really cool. And what we're doing now, and only in we're at 15 days now, we're up to $104,000 raised. Wow. And that's through, that's through 51 investors. So the minimum investment is, is $100. And then we have a max goal of $1,070,000 that we're trying to reach. And the purpose of that is to become the household name. That money is going to help us market, 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 because we want every household in America to know our name, because it's so important to be able to give back to our nation's heroes in this fashion. So with that, why we did it this way instead of going to, you know, typical Silicon Valley investors or angel investors, whatever it may be. Now we opened it up to everybody and we allow like, Jason, you could come in for a hundred dollars, right? You invest a hundred dollars, let's say. Now you have a vested interest in Fund the First. Now your friend that with the racing stuff, you're not going to say, go use a different platform. You're going to say, oh shit, I invested in Fund the First. Why don't I tell them to use this? Not because I invested, but because of the family and the community that surrounds it. You have that vested interest now. So that's why we wanted to do it this way. And, you know, we're still broadening our reach with, with that campaign. It's a lot. We have a lot of work to do with it, but uh, it's it's important. And we're so blessed that in, in 15 days, we're at $104,000. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So well, I appreciate you coming on and we're I'm going to invest $100. The protectors <laughs> is. Uh, okay or underneath my business, DBA is the protectors. And we're going to see, we're going to go, we're going to check this out. Uh, I'm excited to watch your growth and to watch, uh, you know, I'm excited to see you help others. Mm -hmm. You're, you're um, fun to first help others. I really am. It's much needed and it, there needs to be a direct source to where to go to say, Hey, you know what? I got a, a little extra money this month. And you know, it doesn't always have to be that. If you don't have the money, share share right. like subscribe whatever pass the message on because i always say ripple effect ripple effect ripple mm -hmm. effect well what people fail to realize is they could donate one dollar one dollar to a campaign because you know what someone will see one dollar came in and then all of a sudden someone will say oh wow they donated a dollar. i'll do a dollar yeah and then all of a sudden you have 50 people that did a dollar that's 50 bucks yeah why not why not that's what people forget they're like oh i don't have the money to donate to it because they're thinking in their head i have to donate 200 300 yeah exactly no. 
any contribution matters because to that family, especially in a hardship, like a serious hardship, they don't care about the money, but they want to see those comments come in. They want to see the love and support come in. And that's what's important to them during that time. That's exactly what's important. Support. Robert, I appreciate you coming on, man. I appreciate you doing what you're doing for the community. Jason, thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it.